right, we will now call the business session of the February 21st, 2023 council meeting to order at 6.13 p.m. Uh, all council members are present, save our mayor who is out of town on business right now. Uh, we welcome all our guests and visitors here this evening. We provide an opportunity for the public to address the city council on any agenda item or during the hearing of visitors portion of the agenda. On items other than public hearings, speakers will be allotted one three-minute presentation regardless of the number of agenda items the speaker wishes to address. If you are here to speak and have not filled out a registration card, please see the city secretary staff at the registration table outside the auditorium as you came in so that staff can contact you if necessary. If you have handouts, please let us know at the beginning of your presentation and staff will distribute those to council. If you are unable to approach the podium due to physical limitations, a microphone is available to be brought to you. Uh, we, are, uh, we are so delighted to have uh, scouts from uh, BSA Troop 308G uh, who will be presenting the colors this evening. And so if you'll join us uh, for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, the indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you so much for our color. Appreciate you being here. Okay, for uh, those who will be speaking, when called to the podium, uh, we would ask that you state your name and address for the record. Uh, each speaker limit comments to three, to three minutes. If you're speaking on behalf of a group of 10 or more individuals present, uh, please have those persons stand at the beginning of your comments and you'll be given 10 minutes to address the council. Please note that if you stand in support of a person getting 10 minutes to speak, you are forfeiting your right to speak on that item individually. For any person addressing council through the use of a translator, time sp speaking time will be doubled to accommodate the translation services. While public discourse is very important to the council, we have to maintain order in these meetings so that all persons may be heard and city business may be conducted. If so, directed by me, the sergeant at arms shall remove from the council meeting any person who, while addressing the city council or while attending a city council meeting, makes personal impertinent or slanderous remarks, becomes boisterous, or makes unauthorized remarks from the audience, claps hands, stomps feet, whistles, yells, or makes similar demonstrations. I'm sure no one here will do that, uh, but just to let you know. All right, we will move on to our minutes, and we have uh, minutes 2023, 119, and 120, approval of the minutes of the February 20, I'm sorry, February 7, 2023, 2 p.m. special city council meeting, and approval of minutes of the February 7th, 3 p.m. regular city council meeting. Uh, our first item of business is to consider those minutes. Uh, the minutes were provided in your meeting packet. Are there any corrections at this time? No. All right, hearing none, uh, the minutes stand approved as submitted and corrected. We will now move on to our public hearings. And I believe our first one is public hearing 2023-122. Uh, Mr. Peters, uh, please give the staff a presentation. Honorable Mayor Pro Tem, members of the council, this is a public hearing to consider a resolution approving the following subdivision plats. Uh, final plat of the Gonzales Jones edition, lot one, block one, and preliminary plat of the Floyd Casey edition. Uh, eight to zero, plan commission recommended approval uh, of the subdivision plats. All right, any questions for staff? Is there anyone here to speak 
on this item. We'll open the public hearing. Anyone here to speak on this item? All right, we'll close the public hearing. Uh, do we have a motion? I'll move for approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All right, please pull the council. Bearfield? Yes. Rodriguez? Aye. Horner? Uh, Holmes? Aye. Borderood? Yes. All right, motion carries. Now moving to public hearing 2023-123, uh, Mr. Peters. Honorable Mayor Pro Tem, members of the council, this is a public hearing to consider a resolution granting a variance to the Waco subdivision ordinance uh, to delete the requirement for the extension of an eight inch uh, city of Waco water main for the purpose of serving the proposed subdivision plat entitled final plat of the Gonzalez Jones edition lot one block one. Uh, by a vote of eight zero plan commission recommended that the variance request be approved in accordance with section 7.1001 of the subdivision ordinance uh, based on the following findings and condition. Uh, the findings that extraordinary hardships or significant uh, practical difficulties may result from strict compliance uh, with the subdivision ordinance regulations and the effect of the variance will not be detrimental to public uh, safety, health, and welfare, or injurious to other property and due to specific conditions of the site involved. Uh, strict enforcement of these regulations would impose an undue hardship on the applicant. We do have one condition is that further subdivision of the lot that increases the number of lots uh, will require the extension of the water main uh, to serve the new subdivision. All right. Any questions for staff? No. Is there anyone here to speak on this item? Right. Open the public hearing if there is someone. Close the public hearing. Uh, do we have a motion? Move for so move. Second. A motion and a second. Any discussion? Please pull the council. Bearfield? Yes. Rodriguez? Aye. Horner? Aye. Holmes? Aye. Porter Road? Yes. Motion carries, and we move on to public hearing 2023-124. Uh, Honorable Mayor Pro Tem, members of the council, this is a public hearing to consider a resolution approving an amendment to the final plan unit development uh, plan for a PUD known as Allen Samuels PUD, or more recently referred to as the Volkswagen of Waco PUD. On property described as lot two, block one of the Central United Methodist Church, number two edition, and known as 2301 West Loop 340. Uh, by a vote of uh, 8-0, Plan Commission recommended approval of the final PUD plan amendment based on the following findi findings and condition. Uh, one, that the final PUD plan is consistent with the approved concept PUD plan, conditions of the approved concept PUD plan, and requirements of the PUD ordinance, and two, the circulation plan. Uh, public facility and service plans, preliminary architectural plan and site development and landscaping plan, including the final PUD are adequate. And we do have one condition at the time of development, full building plans must be submitted, uh, meeting all uh, Waco development requirements, including but not limited to the following, uh, building code, site grading and drainage, parking, signage, vehicle, pedestrian access and circulation, landscaping, refuse location and access, and fire protection uh, location and ac access. Uh, building permits will not be issued until full compliance with all development standards of City Waco and the approved PED plans. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Peters. Any questions for staff? No. <clears throat> all right. Hearing none, we will open the public hearing. Is anyone here to speak on this matter? All right. Seeing none, we will close the public hearing. Do we have a motion? Move for approval. Second. Got a motion and a second. Uh, any discussion? If not, please pull the count. Bearfield? Yes. Rodriguez? Aye. Horner? Aye. Holmes? Aye. Borderood? Yes. Motion carries, and we will now move on to public hearing 2023-125. Mr. Peters. Honorable Mayor, members of, uh, <coughs> Mayor Pro Tem, members of the council, this is a uh, public hearing to consider a resolution approving the final PUD plan, uh, planning the development for a PUD known as uh, Black Bear Village PUD Phase 3 on property described as Lot 1, Block 1. Of the Carol Lee Evans edition known as uh, 20, uh, 230 Garden Drive. Uh, by a vote of 8-0, Plan Commission recommended approval of the final PUD based on the following findings and conditions. Uh, the findings are the final PUD is consistent with the approved concept PUD plan, conditions of the approved concept of PUD plan, and the requirements of the PUD ordinance, and two, the circulation plan, public facilities and service plan, preliminary architectural plan, and site development and landscaping plan included in the final PUD are adequate. Uh, we do have three conditions. Uh, one, at time of development, full building plans must be submitted, meeting all Waco development requirements, including but not limited to the following. Uh, building codes, site grading and drainage, parking, signage, college and university <coughs> neighborhood district standards, uh, vehicle, pedestrian access, and circulation, landscaping, refuse, 
uh, location access and fire protection location access. Uh, permits will not be issued until full compliance with all development standards. Um, two, property must be platted, uh, meeting all requirements of the PUD and subdivision ordinance before issuance of building permits. And three, a 10 foot pedestrian way uh, consisting of a minimum five foot sidewalk and planter trip between the sidewalk and the public right of way must be installed along Garden Drive. All right. Any questions for staff? No. All right. Uh, let's open the public hearing. Is there anyone who, here to speak on this item? All right. Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Do we have a motion? Move for approval. Second. Motion second. Any discussion? All right. Hearing none, uh, please poll the council. Bearfield? Yes. Rodriguez? Aye. Horner? Aye. Holmes? Aye. Borderwood? Yes. Motion carries, and we will now move on to public hearing 2023-126. Honorable Mayor Pro Tem, members of the council, this is a continuance of a public hearing to consider a resolution granting a special permit to Encore Electric Delivery Company, LLC, for an electrical uh, substation in M1 zoning district on property described as lots A1, Block 2, of the right RG track known as 1200 East Webster Avenue. <coughs> uh, by a vote of 11-0, Plan Commission I recommend an approval request based on the following findings. One, the proposed use is consistent with the comprehensive plan and the purpose and intent of Chapter 28 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Waco. Two, the proposed use is compatible with the appropriate orderly development area which is located. Three, that the proposed use will not be more objectionable to neighboring properties because of traffic congestion, noise, fumes, vibrations, or any other characteristics than any use permitted in the zoning district without the grant and special exception. And four, that available community facilities and services, including the road system, providing access to proposed use are adequate for the proposed use. Uh, the applicant did provide an updated site plan um, with changes that are intended to provide better screening of the facility. Uh, based on these changes, staff does recommend revising condition number 10 as follows. Uh, and that would be the proposed screening wall along the front of the substation as shown on the special permit plan shall be at least eight feet in height. Uh, and be in masonry construction. All right. Any questions for staff? I have one, Seth. The, uh, all the easements are currently in place and the property owners adjacent or within the required um, area have been notified and there's no dissent? That, that's correct. Yes, sir. Any other questions? We'll open the public hearing. Is anyone here to speak on this item? Yes, sir. Please state your name and give your address. Sir, uh, Travis Shanter with Half Associates. I'm at uh, 3803 Parkwood Boulevard in Frisco, Texas. Uh, I'm the engineer of record on this project. Um, Encore staff is unable to make it today due to a, an emerg a medical emergency from Michael Baldwin. Uh, so if you all have any questions, um, I would be happy to relay to him, to him to, those to him or answer them as best I can. Sorry to hear about that. Yeah. Um, is Michael doing, okay? He's doing very well. Okay. Okay. <laughs> that was like, uh, any questions for? Nope. Nope. Thanks right. for the heads Thank up. You. And is there anyone else here uh, to speak on this item? All right. Uh, we will close the public hearing. Do we have a motion? Move for approval. Motion and a second. Any discussion? No. Please pull the council. Fairfield? Yes. Rodriguez? Aye. Horner? Home. Aye. Border Road. Yes, that motion carries, and we move on to public hearing 2023-127. Uh, Honorable Mayor Pro Tem, members of the council, this is a public hearing to consider an ordinance of the City of Waco, Texas, providing that the comprehensive plan be amended to change the land use designation from urban residential to mixed use flex on property described as uh, lots 1A, 3A, Block 6 of the Rotan edition known as 305 North 29th Street. Uh, providing that the code of ordinances be amended by revising section 28-247 in chapter 28 zoning uh, the code providing that the zoning map shall be changed so that certain property described above shall be changed from r2 to 01 or 03 uh, district classification providing for penalties providing sa uh, savings clause providing a severability clause and finding and determining the meeting in which this ordinance is passed is open to the public as required by law uh, by a vote of 5-3, uh, uh, the Plan Commission did recommend disapproval of land use designation change from urban residential to mixed use flex uh, based on the following findings. One, the proposed land use uh, could be considered incompatible with the existing low density residential neighborhood and near the subject property. And two, the adjacent mixed use flex land use designation has frontage on Waco Drive, which is classified as an arterial street. Uh, this property fronts 29th Street, which is classified as a local street. 
Uh, Plan Commission also recommended this approval of the zone change based on the following findings. One, the proposed zoning is not in keeping with the land use component of the comprehensive plan. Two, the existing R2 zoning is more compatible with the existing single family neighborhood and then the proposed 01 or 03 zoning. Uh, three, the surrounding office and commercial zoning in the area has frontage on Waco Drive, which is classified as arterial. Uh, the property uh, fronts on 29th Street, which is classified as a local street. And four, there's adequate supply of commercial and office zoning to accommodate growth in the area uh, for foreseeable future. Uh, pursuant to state law and zoning ordinance, if an application fails to receive a favorable report and recommendation by the commission, it shall not, shall not be uh, approved except for a three-fourths vote of all members of council. And in this case, the plan commission did not give a favorable recommendation. Therefore, a three-fourths vote or five members of council is required uh, for approval of this request. Uh, we did receive a request from the applicant to continue this uh, hearing to the March 21st council meeting. Uh, we will need to have a uh, public hearing uh, to, to get uh, public comment from anybody that wants on the request and the, the continuance first before council takes action on that continuance. Okay. Um, question uh, for our, our council here. Can we, since we've got a request for a continuance, we can take up the overall application and the continuance in one public meeting. Is that correct? Yes, okay. Um, any questions for staff from council on this? All right. We've got uh, a number of cards and handouts as well. And so I'll just call them kind of in the order that I've got, that I received them here. Uh, first up is uh, Meg Salome. If you want to just, uh, as you come up, to the podium, again, three minutes for each speaker. If you're just speaking for yourself, if you just say your name and address and then just address the council. Okay, good evening. Um, my name is Meg Salome. I reside at 3101 Austin Avenue here in Waco. Um, I am here tonight on behalf of the Austin Avenue Neighborhood Association. And I did want to thank you guys for the opportunity to speak and just thank you for your service to our city and all that you do for our city and our neighborhoods. We really appreciate it. Um, the Austin Avenue Neighborhood Association met on February 7th, and this rezone application was discussed at length. The Austin Avenue Neighborhood Association, as a group, is opposed to the rezoning of the property located at 305 North 29th Street, and we request that our city council heed the city planning department recommendation and the city planning commission's vote in opposition of the rezone request. I'm so sorry, this, this is my error. If you can hold that, I, I need to let the applicant speak first. I, oh. I apologize, I took it out of turn. I was going on the, the stack of cards and forgot that they have a right to speak first. Well, um, that. Yeah, hang back yeah. and you'll, you'll get your full three minutes. I'm sorry to, that's right, yeah. You'll get your full three. I, I'm so sorry, the applicant or the applicant's representative is here to speak on behalf of this. Thank you so much. Apologize about the out of order there. Good evening, uh, members of the City Council and everyone in attendance. Uh, my name is Hayden Sawyer. I'm co owner of the Civil Matter LLC. We're the ones that uh, purchased the property at 305 in Waco. Uh, for the continuance portion, there may be one of why we are asking for continuance on that. Is, uh, three of my attorneys are not present tonight. They had other obligations that could make it. Uh, two were out of state. One is uh, doing something with a child in Dallas, so he couldn't make it. Um, the other co-owner of this business, uh, Brittany Lamb, she is in a out of state, or not out of state, country, actually. She's on the honeymoon. So uh, that's the reason why we've got the students and we have a fair shape of this and have our, um, all the other things we've all come to see. <coughs> um, when we bought uh, three or five months from the night, um, you know, we, we love the property, we love the atmosphere, we love the building, you know, that same all over across the street, you know, that was, to me, looked like a blessing for what our mission is. Um, where we're stationed at, or where this residence is at, it does face North 29, um, as Mr. Peter said, and so does the building right beside me, which is St. Albans and its building. So there to my right and to the left is a duplex. So these people don't even live in this community, they live in Kingswood, which is like two and a half hours away, so it's a rental property. I get to look at the back of the yard, which is all trash. Um, 
So that helps us to place block along this. So on this little block here, we have St. Albans Annex, and then you have my property. So we're actually in a kind of unique position on the island, is what we call it. Um, because we have commercial right beside us, I have the apartment complex behind me, or to my right side behind the annex. And I've got a duplex right beside me, which is people making money, you know, off of, you know, renters there. Um, you know, I've, I've walked around the community, I've gotten signatures, I've submitted that to the planning board, um, the people that support us, all of our letters of support. Um, the issue that has actually come to play, and I mean, it's pretty obvious, is St. Albans wanted to buy this in the beginning, but they didn't want to uh, pay what the lady was asking, I paid what the lady was asking. Um, and then the associations, uh, they decided to jump in on it, so it makes a lot of here. Um, but I want y'all to understand in this community, this little Austin Avenue Association only is a small fragment of this district four. There's a lot of good people in district four that's not even associated with this. Um, so we're asking to have this. What we're gonna put in there is we're gonna have nothing but offices. There's a law firm. There's my private investigation company. We don't have traffic coming in and out. Um, that was one of their concerns about my kind of people showing up. Um, if you, we played the last hearing um, with the plan department. One of their priests even said that. She let this, uh, her tongue slip and said that she didn't want my people in the community or my kind in that area. Thank you so much, sir. Right, no problem. Thank you. For sure. All right. Uh, now we will uh, begin with our comment cards and Ms. Salome. Apologies for the... Hello, again, Meg Salome, 3101 Austin Avenue. Here on behalf of the Austin Avenue Neighborhood Association, as I mentioned, we met on the 7th, um, and as an association discussed this rezone application, and as a neighborhood association, we are opposed to the rezoning of the property located at 305 North 29th Street, and we request that our city council heed the city planning department recommendation and the City Planning Commission's vote in opposition of the rezone request. And we request that you vote this evening in opposition of this rezone request. Uh, one of the goals of the Austin Avenue Neighborhood Association is to encourage the restoration, preservation, and improvement of our neighborhood. Aligned with that goal is the desire to maintain the residential feel and boundaries of our neighborhood and prevent commercial encroachment on the mainly residential parts of our neighborhood. We are a community with a limited number of residential structures. Our neighborhood is bordered on all sides by commercial development, and it is under constant pressure from commercial properties on Franklin and Waco Drive. In order to maintain the residential integrity of the heart of our neighborhood and to prevent commercial encroachment, we are opposed to the rezone of a residential property to an office commercial 01 or 03 designation, regardless of the type of business that would occupy that property. Allowing this rezone would allow a commercial encroachment on the heart of our neighborhood and also set a dangerous precedent for future requests to rezone properties in the heart of our residential neighborhood. Thank you. Questions? All right. And we've got another, uh, looks like, uh, in support of the applicant. Is it a Michael Simon? Michael Simon. Michael Simer. Yes, sir, just please state your name and your address. Uh, Michael Simon. I live in District 3, uh, but about a 20-minute drive to the rest of Austin Avenue. I'm over on uh, Gilcrest uh, in uh, Park Meadows neighborhood, uh, 2901 Gilcrest. Um, my wife and I own the Simon Realty Group. Uh, we represented uh, Mr. Sawyer and Ms. Lannon uh, in their purchase of 305 North 29th Street. Uh, I'm here to express my support for the request to rezone the property from R2 to 01. Uh, my hope in this is to cut through a lot of the pomp and charade that was exhibited the last time and just simply present information uh, and support for them. Uh, Haywood and Daniela are assets to our community. Uh, they represent so much of what has made uh, Waco great and flourish. Their business 
as an extension of their dedication to work tirelessly for goodness, righteousness, and justice in our community. And uh, we should be encouraging more people like them to continue making Waco a better place. Uh, a, ma a major factor in influencing such a split vote in the Planning and Zoning Commission uh, was the evidence that was shown as it's currently zoned. 305 North 29th Street is already the exception to the surrounding neighborhood. Rezoning it would actually bring it into conformity with the surrounding properties. The next door neighbor at 329 North 29th and the other structure, um, which is the other structure on the side, um, and the only structure facing North 29th, uh, that property is owned by St. Albans Episcopal Church, their annex. Um, on the other side, opposite end of 305 is, as Haywood mentioned, the duplex area right there. Across the street uh, is the parking lot for St. Albans, their office, and their main building. That is the only single family residence right there in the middle of that block. So rezoning it would be actually keeping it in conformity with the rest of the neighborhood. Um, the opposition from members and representatives of St. Albans Episcopal Church, along with the surrounding neighborhood association, appears also to be disingenuous in the fact that St. Albans Episcopal Church actually submitted a backup offer to purchase this property. Uh, and just a few days before Mr. Sawyer and Ms. Lannon were to close on the property, the title company received a wire transfer from St. Albans uh, in an amount over $10,000. While this was initially thought to be a gift from the church, wel welcoming their new neighbors to the neighborhood, it turned out to be earnest funds submitted to secure their own contract on the property. The church has continued to express their desire to purchase the property even after the Planning and Zoning Commi Commission narrowly voted against the recommendation to rezone. So we're not here uh, because those in opposition to this are simply trying to maintain the integrity of the neighborhood. It just seems another way for them to be able to obtain that property. In conclusion, no matter how the City Council votes in this proposal, whether uh, uh, the property is owned by the Sawyers or the church, it seems that the days of this specific property being used as a single family residence are behind it. As the current owners, the Sawyers uh, and Ms. Lannon are incredible people who operate a vital service that is an absolute asset to our community. They do it uh, not for accolades or support, but I can tell you that the city's acknowledgement of their services by allowing them to operate their business on the property would be incredibly appreciated. All right, then. thank you, sir. Thank you. <laughs> All right, and we have Daniela Sawyer, I think also in support of the applicant. You could just state your name and address. Okay, so my name is Daniela Sawyer. I'm a co-owner of the company at 305 North 29th Street. So basically we purchased this property uh, with the anticipation of rezoning. We had to submit the application we had to become owners to be able to submit this application. Uh, number one, we are wanting to do the 01 office district, which is the most restricted district that is allowed. As far as the current R2 residential zone, it has multiple uses that it currently uh, is able to use for a vineyard, uh, community home, extra uh, mining, so it's already being able to be used for all these other wonderful uses. Uh, so we are going to maintain the residential fill. We have provided the handouts that basically show that it's going to not be uh, modified to show commercial or anything like that. The traffic is going to be minimal. Uh, most of our cases, I mean most of our Clients that we deal with are online or, unfortunately for them, they're incarcerated. So it's not like it's a huge change to the property. Now, if this is not rezoned, this property will be sitting vacant because no resi residential uh, family would want to purchase this because of the amount of traffic. It's on North 29th. We're at a uh, stoplight, North 29th, and Waco Drive. There's already a lot of movement. My children who come often to the office, I do not allow them to stand outside of the front yard of that property because of the amount of traffic. It's, uh, so it's basically, we did, like I, like Haywood stated, there was six, six, uh, 65 residents in support, District 4 residents that have signed. I mean, we walked the streets, we did what we had to do, uh, basically, we just want y'all to be able to support this. And that's it. Okay. Thank you so much. All right. Now, uh, on 
to our next card is Aaron Zimmerman. Good evening, my name is Aaron Zimmerman. I live at 2727 Columbus Avenue in Waco, a block from the property in question. I also can't uh, hide the fact that I'm the rector of St. Albans Episcopal Church, which is across the street from the property in question. Uh, thank you for taking the time to hear us, uh, Mayor Pro Tem and council members. Um, Sir, I think Oh, is there anyone else speaking in favor of this item here today? Oh, yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. I, this is the first time I've been running a meeting with comment cards, so I do apologize. And they came to my hand right as the hearing started, so uh, apologies for my novice. If, ma'am, if Reverend Zimmerman, apologies. Ma'am, if you would take uh, the podium and say your name. Are there any others in support? Okay, and then... Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, and is Kara Portman yeah. here to? Oh, you are Kara Portman. I'm sorry, just got here, uh, and you are in support of this yeah. resolution. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead. Okay. So, hello, everyone. My name is Kara. It's an honor to be here today to support the on-call investigative solutions. And I've known Haywood um, from my criminal case that occurred in 2020. Um, before I even knew who would be assigned to in my case, I prayed every day for a good Christian legal team that wouldn't give up on me and fight for me to prove my innocence. The good Lord did just that. I kept my faith strong, and even on the days I would receive bad news about my case, I have been blessed beyond measure due to Haywood and his awesome team. I am the type of person that asks a lot of questions, especially in a situation such as my case. He was very patient answered all the questions I had, answered every call and text, and helped me understand the legal side of things. Definitely very kind, caring, and big-hearted individual that will go above and beyond as he did for me. I couldn't ask for a better person and team to fight as hard as they did. The hard work, many sleepless nights, dedication, and determination paid off in the end. I will never forget the words Haywood said to me, trust me, we will win this. I will fight until my last breath. No words can describe how truly blessed and thankful my family and I are to have had them fight for me like they did. 2021, my case was dismissed and I continue to pursue my career in healthcare. I am now at LVN living my dream and providing for my family. I graduated at the top of my class with honors and received multiple awards for outstanding academic performance. I wouldn't be where I'm at today if it wasn't for the on-call investigative students. Thank y'all. All right, thank you. Is there anyone else here to speak in support of the application? Okay. Reverend Zimmerman, thank you. My name is Aaron Zimmerman. I live at 2727 Columbus Avenue in Waco, Texas, and I'm also the rector of St. Albans Episcopal Church. As a member of the neighborhood who lives one block from the property in question, I can tell you that the residential character of where I live is it was a key factor in our decision to purchase a house there, something we love <clears throat> about living in the neighborhood. And I can tell you that a lot of other people share that um, feeling. There are a lot more strollers going through the neighborhood and people walking their dogs and children riding their bikes than when we moved here 10 years ago. And it is our concern not with the nature of this business or Mr. Sawyer or Mrs. Lannan's character or the people they serve, nor do we doubt, as a resident of this neighborhood, the um, valuable work they do for our community. The question is, what happens um, when Mr. Sawyer retires or the business decides to relocate and this property is now uh, zoned commercial? And uh, St. Albans has been a neighborhood for 80 years, almost. Um, Castle Heights was started in the 1930s, so almost 100 years coming up in that location. <coughs> So what kind of neighborhood do we want this to preserve for the next 80 to 100 years and beyond at the city of Waco? What kind of city do we want it to be? Um, I can address the fact that St. Albans did make an offer on this property and we did make a backup offer on this property, part of because we see our role as trying to steward this neighborhood and continue its flourishing. Um, 
uh, the encroachment that Mrs. Salome talked about coming from both sides is something that we have dealt with and has affected us as well. And so we've sought to preserve the character of the neighborhood to the extent that we can. Uh, that had to do in part with why we purchased the building that is now the St. Albans Annex. Uh, and when we, when we made an offer on the property at 305 North 29th Street, it was part of this desire to maintain the character of the neighborhood as well as to provide housing for uh, clergy. Uh, uh, typically, seminarians graduate um, and have moved to come and serve us and have a hard time finding housing in Waco. Um, and so we thought this would be a good opportunity to preserve the character of the neighborhood as well as uh, the residential area and, um, and the ministry that happens here. I will point out that um, uh, on-call uh, investigative services, and it's a civil matter, is a for-profit enterprise, and that will continue no matter who's in that space, um, which will change the character of the neighborhood um, for the foreseeable future. Once this change happens, it uh, tends not to go back. That concludes my remarks. Thank you. Next card I have is Andrea Zimmerman. Hello, I am Andrea Zimmerman and I live at 2727 Columbus Avenue with, with Aaron. Um, and I just wanted to speak to the residential fabric of the neighborhood. Um, we have three children, and we have been very comfortable for 10 years letting them walk the two blocks to the church in the neighborhood that we're um, on the same block. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I also want to point out the, the low inventory in the, of homes in this neighborhood for residential use. There are plenty of young families who would like to move to this neighborhood. Um, but the inventory, especially for smaller houses um, that are more accessible financially, um, that inventory is very low. And <clears throat> this house did not sit on the market long at all. Um, the, it was sold pretty quickly, so there was no real time to test the residential use. Up, and that's all. Thank you. Uh, next card I have is Austin England. England and I live at 216 Oriental Road, just right around the corner from the church and from this property. Uh, I want to first uh, say, say that I oppose the continuance. I think everything that has been said, I've already heard in a meeting at the church uh, with the neighborhood association. So it seems like all the arguments that are, that are going to be made in support of this have already been made. I don't think there's any if there is any need for a continuance. Uh, I rise to oppose the, the rezoning here, and I'm gonna make just some bullet points uh, for you. Also agree with uh, the limited, uh, the, the limited residential properties uh, that are in the neighborhood. We'd love to preserve the, the neighborhood. We moved into this neighborhood, having moved from Dallas and Oklahoma City, my wife and I. Uh, we, we lived in an old neighborhood, that's what we looked for, and I've personally had a, uh, an experience with an old historic neighborhood where businesses have been given a limited zoning, uh, a limited commercial zoning in that neighborhood, and when those properties were bought by subsequent purchasers the, and then closed down, the, the plight on those properties was just ridiculous. Uh, we had to fight forever in the city in Dallas to get the zoning changed back to a residential property, and it was just virtually impossible to do. Um, I think there will be a slippery slope um, if we start allowing commercial ventures to come into this neighborhood and again it's very limited and we'd like to preserve the, the residential uh, feel of the neighborhood. I'm sure, and I've said this before, I'm sure that the folks are great who want to move into it. I've heard nothing but good things about them. Y'all have heard nothing but good things about them. 
But when they sell, or when that business closes, closes we don't know who's going to be coming in. We don't know how they're going to take care of that property or what they're going to do. So that that would really concern me. We are my wife's store on Franklin Avenue already has a vape shop across from it. I don't really want a vape shop coming into my neighborhood. Um, I think we heard at the meeting that there was a, that our concerns could be addressed with deed restrictions. I had no idea how that would possibly be enforced by any of the, any of the residents of the neighborhood. That, that would be a contractual matter. I don't even know that I would have standing to deal with the deed restriction that was put into their deed. So that, I don't think, is a persuasive argument. Um, finally, um, I would just like to say that uh, if I wanted to live in Houston, I would live in Houston. They don't have any zoning there, and it's a nightmare getting around there. We love our neighborhood, we love the feel of the neighborhood, and we want it to be preserved. And I would ask that you oppose this uh, zoning restriction. Thank you. Thank you so much. The last card I have is Jesse Lee. Come on up, state your name and address. My name is Jesse Lee, my wife and I. Uh, live at 311 Crescent Road, which is right around the corner from the subject property. Um, I had prepared some remarks based on our experience in Austin. Uh, we moved to Waco from Austin, and we lived in the downtown area in a little community called Rainy Street. And uh, it was a nice little lower middle class neighborhood until about 2010, when a home was purchased by a developer, and they got a variance to put a bar in. And today, 13 years later, Rainy Street is nothing but 30 to 60 story office and condo towers. And that is the truth. That's what happened in Austin. That was my experience. But I want to, I want to speak to one thing that I heard earlier. In addition to being a neighbor, I'm also the director of finance and operations at St. Albans Episcopal Church. I'm not here speaking as that person. I'm here speaking as Barbie's husband and as a, a property owner at 311 Congress, but I feel compelled to clarify the record. For someone to indicate that the earnest money that we put down on a backup offer was a gift, someone thought that was a gift, surely you're sophisticated enough to understand that you can put up a backup offer on a piece of real estate, and one of the requirements of that contract is earnest money. That was the money that we wired to the title company. Nowhere did we indicate it was a gift to welcome them to the neighborhood. It was, I believe, $13,000. We're a church. We're a nonprofit. We can't welcome our new neighbors with $13,000 gifts. It's laughable that they would presume. I'm sorry. It upsets me. The truth of the matter is our interest in that property was residential in nature. It was always going to be clergy housing. We were never going to go for a zoning change. We were never going to make it into an office building or anything else. I met with Mr. and Mrs. Sawyer, they're lovely people. I wish them the best of luck. I wish that they had gotten the advice to find a commercial office property instead of a property that had been a residence since 1914 in the middle of my neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else here uh, that did not register who would like to speak? Just, oh, just get that. Uh, we want to make sure the applicant has a chance for a uh, brief rebuttal. And question for our city attorney, is that a three-minute rebuttal, or how long is that time frame? Three minutes, okay. Ladies and gentlemen of the council, um, thanks for giving me an opportunity to address what was said. Um, I'm going to start off first about the gentleman that says that um, he's not for the continuance. Um, so I can help him understand the law a little bit better and how things kind of work in life. Is, um, I have my attorneys prepared to get this uh, taken care of in a timely fashion. 
Uh, three of them won't want to be able to be here tonight. Things happen in life. That's just the way it is. That's why we're coming to y'all asking for the continuance. Uh, Miss Lannon, she's out of country. Um, so, you know, we haven't had all of our representatives here. So for him to say, oh, well, you know, I don't want to agree with that, that's whatever. Um, the pastor, he says that um, what's going to happen when on call or it's a civil matter, whatever, leaves. Well, what they failed to tell y'all is that when I did meet with the church, I offered them a right of refusal to the property, which means that when I decide to sell this property, I will go to them first, and they can, you know, offer to buy the property. We, we've offered this to the church. We have been so nice to these people. Um, it's bitter. They're bitter. Um, you know, I open my arms to them. I've invited them over there to come see what we've done. They're, um, Meg Salon was talking about the character of the neighborhood and stuff like that. There's plenty of houses on Austin right now for sale. All you got to do is drive down Austin Avenue. There's a big market going on right now. People are selling. And then what's not being sold is Airbnbs. I provided a map to um, that shows all the Airbnbs in the area. Um, on top of that, Mrs. Zimmerman talking about the safe neighborhood and her kids riding a bicycle and all that. Well, number one, Columbus Avenue does not have sidewalks not being done. I walked the neighborhood today. Um, on top of that, if you look at that <coughs> map, there's also, also two sex offenders that live right across from her. So for her to say, well, you know, my people, or as this church is okay, my kind of people, they already have two convicted sex offenders that live right across from her. So they may be worried about those people, not the innocent that we help. Um, This church has had ample opportunity to buy this property. In 1999, they could have bought the property. 2000, they could have bought the property. 2022, they could have bought the property. They tried to lowball the lady that just lost her husband at a below market value to get the place. They didn't get it. I came in and got the property. They were better. Um, but I still, as a Christian, I still, you know, welcome them with open arms. Um, we're also, I know I've got a few seconds, but. We're also doing a community garden back there for the apartment complex. They're low-income people. They're residents of this association area. Um, and they're going to be able to come in there and <clears throat> get fresh vegetables from my garden. We've already started talking to nonprofits to help us out with that. So we're going to be bringing a lot of stuff to the community and very small problems. Thank you, sir. All right. All right. We will uh, close the public hearing at this point. Have a motion. Mayor Pro Tem, if there is any thought to continue this to the next meeting, we don't need to close the public hearing at this point. Okay. Do we need to act on the on the request for continuous? We would need to reopen the public hearing since you technically have closed it. If, and then if, if we want to continue it. Okay. If we don't want to continue, we don't need to act on it. If you, can you repeat your question? Do we have to act on the, con the request for continuance? No. Okay. Glad to open or keep closed the public hearing based on what type of motion comes from the council at this point. I'm inclined to take it up today. But. Okay, yeah. I'll move that we disapprove the request uh, to change the land use designation of the zoning based on staff recommendations and plan commission review. Second. <clears throat> Got a motion and a second. Do we have any discussion? Oh, yeah, I'll say, man, uh, uh, Mr. Sawyer, it sounds like you're a really good guy and you run a successful practice, but the issue that we're talking about here is not directly related to your business acumen, just because, again, I think everybody respects your work and, and what you're doing. Um, this is, really comes down to a zoning issue, residential versus office, and uh, this council has set a very high bar uh, for residential zoning because and I personally have espoused this several times on this dais for everybody's tired of hearing me say this but the home is the biggest investment anybody makes and uh, there's an expectation when you buy a home that uh, the of those neighbors that you preserve the neighborhood and the city creates the expectation of a neighborhood in a single family uh, home zoning so uh, we've asked the adjacent neighbors to weigh in they have weighed in uh, and in this case I think uh, it definitely appears that the adjacent neighbors are opposed, and so I'm going to support that uh, that sentiment. 
Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll add, which is, you know, I, in terms of the type of business, I think that, that matters not to me. I, I, I'm an attorney, and I've been on both sides of uh, prosecution and defense, and I, I fully agree that accused citizens uh, deserve robust representation legally and investigation. I know that's what your service provides, and I'm glad that you're doing that. I do think uh, in terms of this area, there is a genuine concern about the encroachment of uh, non-residential zoning into uh, a neighborhood that is uniquely surrounded by major commercial corridors of our city. And there needs to be, as Councilmember Holmes says, a very high standard if we're gonna change that. And I don't think that there's a fear that this structure will deteriorate unless the zoning uh, is changed, and I think that would probably be my standard for even considering uh, taking something out of residential, whether the structure itself will go into some kind of deterioration state, but I, I don't perceive that here whatsoever. I appreciate uh, the comments by folks on both sides. I just feel uh, Councilmember Holmes' motion is appropriate in this case. All right. Any other discussion? Please pull the council. Bearfield. Sorry, can you repeat the motion, please, for clarity? Yes, the motion is to uh, disapprove the um, the rezone. Sorry. Thank you. Uh, yes. Rodriguez. Horner. Uh, Holmes. Hi. Borderud. That motion carries, and we will now move on to public hearing 2023-128. We do not have to vote on the continuance to vote it down since we already voted mm -hmm. the whole issue down. That's, that's correct. Okay. Yeah. Both them, members of the council, this is a public hearing to consider an ordinance of the city of Waco, Texas, amending certain definitions in section 13.465. In Article uh, 13, bed and breakfast facilities and short-term rental facilities of Chapter 13, license permits and business regulations in Section 28-1 of Article 1 in general uh, of Chapter 28, zoning of the Code of Ordinances, repealing all ordinances or parts of ordinances in conflict herewith, providing for inclusion in the code, providing for penalties, providing servants clause, providing a servility clause, and finally determining that the meeting in which this ordinance is passed is open to the public as required by law. Uh, by a vote of 8-0, uh, the Plan Commission uh, recommended approval of the amendments as proposed. All right. Are there any questions for staff? No. All right. Uh, is there anyone here to speak on this item? Open the public hearing for that purpose. All right. Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. I didn't receive any cards on this matter. Uh, so do we have a motion? Move for approval on first reading. Second. A motion and a second. Any discussion? All right. Please pull the council. Yes. Rodriguez. Yes. Hor Horner. Uh, Holmes. Aye. Borderud. Yes. That motion carries. And we will now move to the consent agenda. And I'm going to need some guidance given the comments that we've got. Uh, the folks signed up. I think I know I've got an affidavit of substantial interest on resolution. 2023-146, I think resolution 2023-147 has been pulled uh, from, the, uh, from the consent agenda because we have some comments on that one. And then I also see resolutions 133, 134, 135, and 136. Also, we have a single comment on those items. So do we need to take those up one at a time? Yeah, yes, sir. So you would first act on the items that are basically off of the consent agenda, one at a time, and then the remaining items you could vote on as a group. Um, then let's take, it looks numerically, I think we're going to go ahead and take up resolutions. Uh, we've got one speaker for resolution 133, 134, 135, and 136. Um, Show just take up 133 and then. Just one speaker speaking on all of them. Yes. Then the speaker comes up and has to speak on all of them in three minutes together. And then you would just vote on them individually after that. Okay. Yes, sir. That sounds good. Um, so we've got uh, Mr. Ephraim Herring uh, speaking on resolutions 133, 134, 135, 136. And then we will vote on them 
in sequence. Is that okay? Thank you. Appreciate that. Good afternoon. Good evening. My name is Ethan Barron, and I live at 1044 Chestnut. The reason why I have it, I'm speaking on this uh, tax abatement, is because right now I apply for the same thing. But actually, the contractor that's on this on this uh, one, actually I'm skipping out for 134. Uh, it should be 133, 135, 136. The contractor on that, uh, the problem I got is. The tax abatement agreement was not turned to me when it was approved by the city, number one. Number two is there's no ordinance in the city of Waco that says once a apartment, a property, a certificate of occupancy, the owner gets a copy of that. And the, reason, and the second reason why I'm opposing this is verification of certificate of occupancy is very important. Because that document is used to get money from a bank or a first mortgage. The reason why I'm bringing this up is because these are the same people that worked on my property at 1046 Chestnut. As of today, at 1900 hours, 1912 hours, the property is still in violation because I have not received a certificate of occupancy verification from the city of Waco. And I want to thank your engineering department and your planning department because the house is in violation. The house is still in violation. The owner is responsible to make sure that all the documentation is correct, not the contractor. So on a tax abatement, I guess, did they tell them that, they need to, that you make a contract with the contractor? You pay a certain price, like I did, $109,000. And they got done on my property. By tax abatement, it's supposed to be an appraised at $90,000. My property appraised at $77,000. Which means my $84,000 loan was under water. So I'm hoping that you pass an uh, ordinance where the owner of the property gets all the documentation and all the benefits, all the benefits, that it's, it's offered, because I didn't get none of it. I signed the, the tax abatement, which I haven't paid yet. I still pay my taxes, see the taxes. It's only the city taxes. But this is the reason why I'm kind of opposed is to make sure that the owner is notified of everything they're entitled to, and that the property is in accordance with all city regulations, because mine is not. And it's been like that ever since August 8, 2017. God bless you, y'all be safe. Can't even live in it because it's a state law to live in an unoccupied Okay, and so uh, my understanding is Mr. Herring, Mr. Herring was not speaking on 134 of those. So right. speaking on 133, 135, and 136. Yep. Uh, are there any other speakers here to speak on any of those three before we take them up in sequence? Okay. Um, so now we're taking up resolution 2023-133. Uh, Do we have a motion? Move for approval. Second. Right. Any discussion? All right, if not, please poll the council. Bearfield? Yes. Rodriguez? Aye. Horner? Yes. Holmes? Aye. Porterroot? Yes. All right, that carries, and now we will move on uh, to the next one spoken on uh, resolution 2023-135. My understanding is no one else here to speak on that one. Um, and do we have a motion? I move for approval. Second. All right, motion and a second. Any discussion? If not, please pull the council. Bearfield? Yes. Rodriguez? Aye. Horner? Aye. Holmes? Aye. Borderoot? Yes. Carries uh, resolution 2023-136. Um, my understanding is there was no one here to speak on that besides Mr. Herring. Uh, do we have a motion? I move for approval. Second. Aye. Second. Any discussion? If not, please pull. Rodriguez? Aye. Corner? Aye. Home? Aye. Porter Room? Yes, that motion carries. And I think we're on 136. Uh, resolution 2023-136. Uh, no one else here to speak on that one. Do we have a motion? I believe you just voted on that. Yeah, I, did. Yep. I did it. Yes. Okay, we're good. Sorry. 
going backwards. Um, then we've got in sequence, I've got an affidavit of substantial interest filed on resolution 2023-146. Do we have, do we need to open that public hearing or do we just take it up? Is that what you said? Yeah, I believe it's 146. Just a resolution, so. And no one's registered to speak. Okay, so do we have a motion on that one? I can't vote on this one. Move for approval. Second. Motion and second, any discussion? If not, please pull the council. Fairfield? Yes. Rodriguez? Aye. Horner? Aye. Aye. All right, motion carries. And now I believe the last one that we've pulled from the consent agenda is resolution 2023-147. And we've got, I believe, four registered speakers on this. Um, and the first speaker on this is Dr. Ken Wilkins, PhD. Sir, if you state your name and address when you come to the podium. Good evening. My name is Ken Wilkins. I reside at 5020 Bosque Ridge Road. Oops. You may continue. The buzzer went off inadvertently there. <laughs> but thank you, uh, Honorable Mayor, Pro Tem, Council Members, and City Staff for the opportunity to address you tonight about Resolution 2023-147. I told you my name is Ken Wilkins. I'm a professor emeritus of biology and former associate dean for sciences at Baylor University. Being recently retired, though, I do not represent the university. Rather, I'm offering comments as a community citizen who is concerned with leaving a high-quality environment for our children and grandchildren. Let me first commend city council and the city for sponsoring numerous environmentally friendly initiatives. For example, the Cobbs Recycling Center has recently expanded operating hours, enabling residents greater convenience in recycling. And a citywide recycling program has recently been made more robust by offering new ways to recycle glass. Uh, the city also is sponsor, a sponsor of the Green Communities Initiative, which is a consortium of government, industry, NGOs, educational opportunity, uh, institutions, and individuals, all seeking to enhance collaborations that will improve the environment. Now, this initiative offers many educational opportunities to the public, including workshops on such topics as going solar, growing greenhouses, and a certification course for composting at Urban Reef. And, and it's a lengthy list of these initiatives that the city is, is uh, working with. So the city is laying a good foundation for environmentally friendly programming. As helpful and desirable as these efforts are, however, they are rather limited in scope. They have little impact on the biggest issue of our time, and that is climate change and the climate crisis. You know, the council does make decisions on matters of greater scope that do relate to the climate crisis, and one of those, Resolution 147, is on the agenda tonight. It pertains to purchase of new vehicles, uh, several 15 passenger transit vans. The proposal is to purchase three ICE that is internal combustion engine vehicles. We view this as an opportunity to make a different decision, a decision that will combat the climate crisis rather than compound it. You know, rather than buy traditional gasoline powered vehicles that will spew greenhouse gases for the multiple year lifespans of those vehicles, why not buy EVs, electric vehicles? EVs don't generate and emit hydrocarbon pollutants or carbon dioxide, which is a major greenhouse gas that traps heat thereby leading to global climate warming. And as Dr. Northcutt will uh, note a little later, electric vehicle transit vans are available. We realize it's not feasible for, to make a wholesale conversion of the entire city fleet to EVs overnight, but transitioning to a fully electric fleet should be the goal. Every vehicle purchase should be seen as an opportunity to make a step toward that goal and to combat climate crisis. Thank you for hearing my comments. Thank you, sir. Right. Our next comment card. Oh, just right under the buzzer. Uh, next comment card is Monty Suffern. Just state your name and address as you approach the podium. Yes, uh, my name is Monty Suffern. I live at 3901 North 30th Street in Waco. And so, good evening, and thank you for the opportunity to talk to you. As I said, my name is Monty Suffern. I know I'm well qualified to speak to this issue, the purchase of these transit vans as they relate to environmental degradation. I am a chemical engineer. 
My working life included 40 years of teaching university level courses uh, in chemical engineering, environmental engineering, pollution control and some occupational health and safety courses. The last six of the years I was teaching were at Baylor University in their aviation sciences department where I taught courses on fuels and combustion, on air pollution detection and measurement, and atmospheric chemistry. The atmospheric chemistry course was also taught at graduate level. Apart from that, I'm a father, a grandfather of 10, and I wish to leave this planet in a habitable condition for my grandchildren and their progeny. With regard to the damage to our Earth and the environment, particularly the warming of the planet, I know the science, I taught the science, I believe the science, and I can assure you that we really are in a climate crisis, likely beyond a tipping point, from which recovery will be extremely difficult. The finer details of climate change are complex, but the fundamentals are relatively simple, and in fact even freshman and sophomore year chemistry and chemical engineering students should be able to do the calculations. In essence, increasing levels of CO2 in our atmosphere are directly implicated. I know along with methane and a few other gases, but it's the burning of fossil fuels to form CO2, which is the major source of our issues. There's no such thing as a clean fossil fuel. Of course, modern living makes it difficult not to contribute to CO2, but I feel we should all be trying to minimise our carbon footprints. Transportation, in particular road transportation, contributes a substantial portion of CO2 emitted to the atmosphere. The bigger the vehicle and the engine, the more CO2 is emitted per mile driven. The calculations, as I said before, are relatively simple. It was a one-page calculation. If the vehicle's doing 10 miles per gallon, which I would think that at Ford Transit vans they're about going to do, it will be emitting, and if it does 10,000 miles in a year, then it will emit 18,000 pounds <coughs> of CO2 during that one year lifetime. Thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. The next card we have is Jack Bowers. Well, thank you, everyone, for taking a minute. My name is Jack Bowers. I live at 3600 Chateau Avenue in uh, Waco. And uh, I'm here opposed to the idea of buying three Ford cars, trucks, $160,000. I think you should buy electric. Now, I've given you a handout. You'll notice in this envelope here that you each have, there, I want to draw your attention to a couple of things. This is a Washington Post article, uh, which I copied and pasted in this uh, piece of paper here for you, that just a couple days ago addresses a major problem with uh, reservoir, Lake Powell. Lake Powell Reservoir. To one particular sentence, it's worth repeating. He's saying at 3,370 feet, the reservoir becomes a dead pool. In other words, if the water level gets down to 3,370, it's a dead pool, meaning the water may be unable to flow downstream at all, cutting states off. Water is about a quarter of the water in the Los Angeles Basin. And, you know, Lake Waco, we're in the same boat. And is not looking particularly good for rain. So we need to do something to address this. Also, interesting article. Uh, this is sort of ongoing piece of information about one billion trees. Just like to really bring your attention to the fact that the Nature Conservancy's plan to plant a billion trees is part of the solution in this world and not part of the problem. And uh, so I also want to say that taking action today to not allow the purchase of these Ford trucks 
instead to seek out a way to buy an electric vehicle would be a very important symbolic gesture the city of Waco could, could make a difference here and create some momentum and a little traction towards the kind of changes we need to you know, bite the bullet and take. So I'm noticing my time, my clock's still 2.59. I'm gonna keep on going if it's okay with you guys. So, sorry, you better, better start that clock. <laughs> now, I, and lastly, I, what I did to just hopefully to maybe get your attention a little and start to take a look at this, I created an artwork. And this artwork has got an important component, this bright yellow over here that's on top of a pretend shadow. To me, that yellow represents the sun. I mean, a wonderful opportunity to harness the sun. And I think we need to try to do everything we can to kind of go in that direction. So <clears throat> I just uh, appreciate you guys taking a minute with me today. Uh, and let's plant more trees. By the way, one last comment. Dr. Alan Northcutt has created something called Waco Friends of the Climate. This gentleman, at his own cost, has away hundreds of trees to Waco residents. They're putting them in their yards. As a matter of fact, there's a big event coming up on the 22nd of April, it's Earth Day, where he's gonna give away another 500 some odd trees. So please get in there, get that tree, put it in your yard. Let's get a billion trees going somehow. Thanks for your consideration. Thank you, sir. All right, the last card I have on this is Dr. Alan Northcutt. <clears throat> Alan Northcutt, 619 Stone Manor Drive, McGregor. Uh, you do have a handout which provides documentation for my statements. We are all today because we are living within a climate crisis. Our timeline for action is very short. We must cut emissions 45% by 2030. We hope to stay within the 1.5 C temperature increase. In addition to us, we have two uh, written comments that were submitted. A registered nurse notes that the World Health Organization considers climate change the greatest health threat of our time. A comment from Joe Welter of the Community Race Relations Coalition calls on the city to purchase at least one electric passenger van. Now, the bottom line is you have on my handout on the first page um, a Ford e-transit van, electric van with 14 seat capacity. So it does exist. It is from creative bus sales, which in fact the city often uses to buy vehicles. I spoke with them today by phone. They do have this vehicle. I don't know the timeline to get it. They haven't given me that yet, but that bus is available. Um, there are addition, additional um, companies. Lightning makes a 15 passenger uh, vehicle. BYD has a transit bus uh, that holds up to 22 people. Now you might ask, are these buses being used? In your handout, you have some stats on e vans in the United States. Last year, there were over 5,000 full-size e-buses in use. Of the small transit buses, which is what we're talking about today, there were 867 in use in the country, 56 in Texas. So it's happening, and we need to catch up. So we call on the council to vote no on this resolution to purchase at least one uh, gas, um, excuse me, at least one uh, electric van, cancel a gas order if, if need be. This is a great opportunity for the city to act on the pledge it made last summer to address the climate crisis. If this is approved, it's basically greenwashing, where we state one thing and do another. The science is crystal clear that to keep global temperature response or increase to 1.5, robust action has to happen in all jurisdictions, including at the city level. In a climate emergency, rather than find continuing excuses not to buy electric vehicles, we need to find ways to act and buy electric vehicle now. We do not have time to delay further. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And my understanding is there are no other comment cards on this item. Is that correct? All right. Is anyone else here to speak on this item? Council, I wanted to draw your attention to something that's pertinent. This uh, item that's a 
in front of you is actually a ratification, uh, which means staff has already, uh, because of the timeline associated with acquiring these vans and the limited amount of time that Ford allows you to order these vans, staff had already, has already moved forward on the purchase of these three vans associated with this item. Um, that being said, I think there's compelling uh, testimony from individuals from the audience and that remain compelling to me in future orders, but they wouldn't be pertinent to the action that's already been taken by staff. All right, thank you. Do we thanks. have a motion? Or do we have any questions for staff? No, thanks, President, for that. Do we have a motion? I'll move, I'll move for approval. All right, we've got a motion and a second. Any discussion? Yeah, I'll just say, yeah, Bradley, thanks for, for that. And Dr. Northcutt, yeah, thanks for the, the input and the, your efforts behind keeping this in front of us. And we are evaluating. I think we have a new fleet services manager, too, that will, is doing an in-depth look at the, at the inventory in the fleet. So but we're, we are taking this seriously. What can we do to uh, move forward on this type of thing, not on these three vans, but going forward to make sure that we move down that path. Sure. Um, over the past, uh, Paul, why don't you hop in there, uh, give a brief summary of the fleet study that was conducted. Uh, and then uh, Councilmember Horner, I'll get you a copy of that. Okay. But I'm going to let Paul That'll Kane speak to that study for a moment because it's pertinent to this discussion. Thank you, Bradley. Okay. Uh, Council member, we, uh, we had a study done by, by CST Fleet Services. They do studies for a, a number of, of different... Try a different uh, mic. What? Try a different mic. How about this one? Yeah. Better? Kind of. Deidre had a good mic. <laughs> uh, Council member, uh, we had a study done by CST, and they, they do fleet studies for municipalities across the country. And in that study, they spoke about the need to transition to EVs um, and pointed out that there's a number of different factors that come into play with them. It's certainly life cycle cost is one, availability is another, um, maintenance and where the maintenance can be done. Um, can it be done locally? Do you have to send them away? Um, availability in terms of time frame for the city. We have our fleet on a rotation and typically when we have one that comes up for replacement, it's well in need of replacement. We can't wait. Um, years to get that done. So there were a number of factors that they listed in their study and as Bradley said we'll get that to you but it's a it's a combination of factors that are looked at and certainly the ability to charge them and, and recharge them is another um, both cost to the city and, and also dictates availability as well. So all of those factors come into play with each purchase. We evaluate those and look at the market and see where the market is and what the market has provided and what's available within time frames that we have. And I think in the study, the bottom line was sedans um, will, will likely be the first place that we can turn to in terms of EV purchases. And then over time, as the market matures and manufacturers begin making fleet level vehicles, that that's the time that the city can make that transition probably in the most favorable economic way. Uh, just for clarification, I am seconding uh, Resolution 147 on the ratification of the Ford vans, not the differences of opinion in going on. So I just want to make sure on the record, Michelle, that I am uh, seconding the resolution for 147 for the purchase of these. Uh, the ratification of the purchase. Yes, the ratification of these vans, not the other. Yeah. Any other discussion? Council, the other, the other thing that is pertinent, because we don't bring you a lot of ratifications, right? right? By, by their nature, they're right. few and far between. Uh, but the source of funds on this acquisition is grant funding, a child care relief fund, which required the vans to be in hand by May of this year. Uh, so we were under, so there, there's reasoning for the ratification that, um, it's noted in the item, but it's kind of deep in the item. So I want to make sure that folks saw it, because um, I, don't, I don't make it a practice to bring your ratifications. Thank you, City Manager Ford. And I think we're aware, and as we move to this vote, I'll say this one thing. I will, I, Dr. Northcutt and um, the Waco Citizens um, for Climate Change, we, 
I hope you realize that we have been hearing you and you know, are working and moving at, at, at the speed of trust in trying to do better for the sustainability of our city. Um, I was at a conference last week and spoke with the um, TxDOT uh, representative about the electric charging stations that will be in place upon, along I-35 and how that will affect our city and how we engage in, in, in what the state is doing from the, Nash, the federal infrastructure bill. Um, we are, try, we, I, think, I think this council more than most has spoken out on sustainability and are trying to do things to better our city for our, the future generations. And you know, we hope that as we move in all the things, we had the discussion on water conservation today, and we talk about these things that we can count on you all as partners to work with us and not assume that we're working against you. Um, greenwashing was tough for me to hear today um, because of the things that we have done, especially in the five years that I've sat on this council. So I need you to, I, I appreciate your partnership. We look, the inroads that we have made for the types of recycling that we do in this city, how we are trying to move uh, with solar, solar uh, charging and solar uh, energy and, and how we switch and transition our vehicles by fleet, which is tough, um, to a more sustainable factor. So I look forward to working more with you because understand we hear you. I think we've got a motion and a second and any other discussion? All right, hearing none, please pull the council. Bearfield. Yes. Rodriguez. Aye. Horner. Uh, Aye. Uh, Border Road. Yes. Motion carries, and I believe now we will take up what remains of the consent agenda, uh, which is, I think, still, a, still the bulk of the consent agenda. Read the numbers, Mayor. It, everything except 133, 135, 136, 141, 146, and 147. All right. We will take that up, uh, as stated. Uh, do we have a motion on the consent agenda, save those enumerated uh, items? Move for Second. Sec We've got a motion and a second. Any discussion? Uh, please poll the council. Yes. I guess. Aye. Border, uh, Horner, sorry. Aye. Holmes. Aye. Border Rude. Yes. Motion carries, and we will now move to our ordinances. We have one ordinance, ordinance 2023-156. An ordinance of the city of Waco, Texas, authorizing a developer participation agreement with Mercer McMillan LLC to allow the city of Waco to participate in the total cost for oversizing of improvements required by the city for the m, &M Industrial Park Edition in an amount not to exceed $2.5 million to be paid monthly in an amount not to exceed 40% of this total cost of oversizing of improvements per month. In accordance with Texas Local Government Code sections 212.017 through 212.074, I think I misstated, sections 212.071 through 212.074, authorizing the city manager to execute any documents in connection therewith, repealing all ordinances or parts of ordinances in conflict herewith, providing a several building clause, providing a savings clause, and finally determining the meeting at which this ordinance is passed as open to the public as required by law. This ordinance is approved uh, by council vote on first reading on February 7th, 2023. All right, is there a motion? Move for approval on second reading. Second. Got a motion and a second. Any discussion? Please poll the council. Bearfield? Yes. Rodriguez? Aye. Horner? Aye. Holmes? Aye. Border Road? Yes. Motion carries. And we now move to the hearing of visitors concerning any city business. Did we receive any cards on this? Do we just open it up? Is anyone here to speak with us under the hearing of visitors? So I, I believe, um, yeah, this is just the, yeah, the hearing of visit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. So hearing none, we will move on to council comments on items of community interest, my favorite agenda item. I want to speak up. Flip, I see you out there, and your whole troop is still here. God bless you. This is one of the longer meetings that we've had, and y'all are still uh, tuning into city government at work and seeing how it all happens. So I appreciate y'all being here. The color guard was fantastic, and I appreciate your, your input. And you put out some Eagle Scouts. Yeah, that's it. 
and I understand that you have an Eagle Scout. And is, is that Eagle Scout here tonight? Also, hey, right. congratulations. Congrats. <laughs> Appreciate y'all. Anyone, anyone else? All right, I've, I've got a few, so I apologize uh, in advance. But w was uh, glad to welcome the uh, Secretary of Veterans Affairs, uh, Dennis McDonough, to Waco uh, on Thursday before last. Uh, at Baylor University, they had a student veterans roundtable, and I was able to welcome him to Waco. Uh, he was in town essentially uh, trying to hire as many of the 50,000 employees they're trying to, to hire uh, nationwide to process claims and uh, as, as some of veterans benefits law has, has expanded and we were uh, made sure to, uh, to show our commitment uh, as a partner with the VA uh, with their considerable investment both with the regional benefit office and uh, the Doris Miller uh, VA medical center uh, in our community. I wanted to give a shout out to uh, our director of uh, planning services, uh, Clint Peters and to our deputy city attorney uh, who joined me uh, with the People's Law School for a presentation. I know uh, Judge Garcia also presented at the People's Law School at Baylor University weekend before last, uh, but Clint and Kathy were good partners in doing a little municipal government 101 where we uh, tried to lift the veil as much as possible and show how the city works, not that our city is not a model of transparency. Uh, it was also great to join with uh, Councilmember Horner for the Tennyson groundbreaking. Uh, last week. It's not every day you get to uh, break ground on your son's current middle school. Uh, so that was a lot of fun. And I know he's a former Waco ISD parent, so that was fun to be there uh, that day. And finally, uh, last but not least, though we were not the winners, uh, the HBA, the HEB Celebrity Chef Cookoff <laughs> was a tremendous success, joined by me. my fellow co-chef, uh, Andrea Bearfield, and uh, Chef Air, Natasha Jarman, of the heirs table and we had a wonderful time. We had some incredible dip and uh, we did our best to sell it and the marketing team for the city was very helpful, uh, Monica and others. So I'll pass that to my, to my fellow council member. Oh no, it's just, it's on next year. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> right, we're, we're gonna be loaded for bear, so get ready. <laughs> any other comments before we adjourn? All right, any requests, any council reports or requests for future agenda items? All right, hearing none, we are adjourned. Oh, oh. Didn't I have one going on in there? We may need to look at that because it takes you forever and it's really dangerous at some point in time. The traffic backup waiting for those lights to change and all the traffic there. Council Member Rodriguez, would it be okay as the council member for that intersection to join this agenda request? You may. Okay. <laughs> Can I co sponsor? Yes. All right. Thank you so much. Anything else from council before we adjourn? All right, thank you so much, we are adjourned. <laughs>